Hello, welcome to Tech Transform. In this uh, session, we are going to cover about a technology called PySpark. So, PySpark is basically a combination of Spark with Python. Spark provides a lot of uh, APIs to interact with. Uh, among these are called uh, you can interact with either using Scala, Java, Python, and R. So, Spark. If you are going to use Python as an API to interact with Spark, that package is called PySpark. This is very latest in the market, so because Python is very popular language, and Spark is also very popular. So these co this is this is now become a very deadly combination. That's why we should learn uh, this PySpark technology. So agenda of this PySpark, we are going to cover. Uh, the actual coding is going to start after this session so before that the installation and the coding actual coding before that we need to understand uh, the building blocks behind the behind the spark we are going to discuss about the overview of a spark we are going to discuss about what is python and what is a spark then we are going to cover what big data overview hadoop map reduce sdfs then the spark the rdd spark data frame and so on and so forth so let's start with uh, uh, before we begin with the setup and coding in any python uh, we we need to understand what is spark in the context of of big data also we are going to with a general explanation of big data and uh, the related technologies so big data uh, in big data overview we are going to cover about what is big data explanation of hadoop map reduce and spark and how these these are interrelated and how what are the comparisons among them local versus distributed system we are going to learn we are going to learn a little bit about hadoop's ecosystems and the overview of overview of spark so these are the terminology we are going to learn this is not going to learn in a full detail this this we are going to run the uh, abstract view of uh, all these uh, technologies uh, now, now that uh, now the thing called uh, what is big data. So now nowadays we are generating a lot of uh, data, uh, jillions, uh, peta petabytes of data uh, in a day. If you if if you if you have a local computer and let's say you have a RAM of zero to thirty two GB, even uh, now nowadays machines comes with sixty four GB RAM. So if if you if you have a local system and if you if you want to processing your process your data and that fits into the scale of this 0 to 32 GB or 0 to 64 GB depending upon RAM so it is called this data is not called big data this is called a normal data you can handle in your single machine but what if your data size is very large if you are dealing with a millions of records millions of transactions YouTube's getting hundreds TB of data upload in a minute. How you are going to handle this data? So that's the technology called. Then this data becomes big data. Let's say if you have a big uh, SQL database, now you want to handle. So how you are going to handle it? There could be a thing you can move your storage from local computer to a hard drive instead of RAM. Or we can use a distributed system that distributes that distributes the data to multiple machines and computer. Means you can use the computation power of n number of machines and combine them and uh, do your work and utilize for processing. So that's the uh, use of uh, a distributed system. And big data requires all these things. Let's understand what is local versus distributed system. Local local system is your, uh, is your like normal desktop or your or your local computer where you have your CPUs, cores, hard drive, RAMs, everything locally to your locally to your laptop. Distributed, uh, moreover, distributed system is like you have a one master node and other nodes are connected. Means this you can treat a uh, one laptop, two uh, second laptop, third laptop combinations of laptop or desktops. Means you can see the combinations of CPUs, CPUs, CPUs. Then it gives you more powerful environment where you can processing a data where you are going to utilize all the computation powers of the single single machine and it's going to combine and give your give result back to the master node. Means using this distributed architecture, you can process big chunks of data and you can solve big data problems and you can analyze big data. If you have normal data, you can use this environment. <coughs> 
local versus distributed you can see the let's say you have a four core cpu but in distributed you have and uh, let's say every machine every commodity hardware you have two cores two cores you can utilize you can as as per your need you can add more cores also uh, parallelly so that's the local versus distributed a local process will use the computation resource of a single machine so in in a, in a case of local process it is going to use the computation of a single machine a distributed process has access to the computational resources across a number of machines means the thing we just discussed same thing is written here it's after a certain point it is easier to scale uh, out your many lower cpu machines than try to scale up to a single machine the problem uh, comes with uh, with handling the big data is like you cannot increase your own there is a, always a limit if you want to scale your own local environment let's say you have billions of data you want to handle and, you, and your local system you want to increase the size of your local system increase the ram increase the processing power in that case let's say you invested some money also now your system is ready to uh, handle those data but what about in future let's say you your uh, there could be a chance now you don't need those uh, processing high computation power uh, setup in your machines then you already invested a lot of amount so that's what the concept called distributed systems and uh, renting uh, on a cloud amazon uh, amazon uh, aws amazon web server or google google cloud platform so distributed systems have the advantage of easily you can easily scale you can easily add number of commodity hardware or cores of computers to a in a single uh, con connected to a master node you can add n number of nodes and you can as you need the power of computation as you're handling in handling the data it can increase and you can increase uh, you can scale your uh, machines also uh, this uh, this distributed technologies uh, this distributed architecture also uh, include includes fault tolerance means if one machine fails the whole network can still go on that's because they internal they used to create backup of each nodes in in the other node so let's say in any case if any node goes down so the whole network is not going to go down it still work and you don't the user don't have a feeling that anything behind the scenes something went wrong let's discuss that discuss the typical format of distributed architecture that uses hadoop basically distributed architecture uh, uh, given by its hadoop hadoop is uh, a technology its combination of providing distributed distributed file system along with that computation thing like map reduce so combination of distributed file system and map reduce is called hadoop Hadoop is a is a way where you can distribute very large files across multiple machines. So Hadoop give because it uses the uh, HDFS file system that is called Hadoop distributed file system that is very popular nowadays. Even if you are using a Spark, a Spark is just a computation engine. It doesn't have any storage engine, but Hadoop has storage in engine as a HDFS. So spark can uh, cannot alone run it it needs let's say if you want to store your data on any hdfs so spark rely on hadoop for hdfs uh, hadoop distributed file system so hadoop generally people misunderstood they uh, start comparing hadoop with uh, spark hadoop is storage engine plus computation engine but spark is only computation engine there is no uh, storage involved with that HDFS allows the users to work with a larger so it's because it's it supports HDFS file system so it allows you to work with a larger data sets you can uh, distribute your uh, big file system into a small small chunks HDFS also duplicates block of data for fault tolerance fault tolerance means it create rep it used to rep create replicas of your nodes in another node so if, let's say if any nodes get down so you you're not going to uh, you're not going to get any uh, network down your network is still work your whole system is still going to work it also uses mapreduce mapreduce is a computation uh, let's say if you want to uh, apply some computation techniques to pr for processing so hadoop uses mapreduce this is how the distributed storage looks like so this you can see is the master node where it is called name node and these are data nodes this is also called slaves means name node 
let's say anything you are going to uh, ask Nameno to perform some processing it is going to divide all this task it is going to divide the, the big task into small and small tasks to these data nodes and these data nodes is going to respond back with their result and the user will finally its name node duty is to uh, accumulate all the results and show you as a one <coughs> moving on so these are the technical uh, thing we are not going to much detail about because these we are not concentrating upon the actual HDFS uh, and Hadoop here. So still uh, HDFS will use blocks of data it's with a size of 120 MB by default. So let's say you have a big data so HDFS is going to di divide the data into a uh, in, 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 into an in a, into a blocks and e and a, by default a block size is 128 MB. Anything beyond that it is going to create new block each of these blocks is repeated three times so it's depend upon its configurable uh, by default if you set you, you're going to set the replication factor as three by default then what name node is going to do name node is going to create three backup of each node the blocks are distributed in a way to support fault tolerance so fault tolerance we uh, discussed in the my uh, last uh, slide these are again the same thing MapReduce is, uh, is a computation thing coming with the Hadoop but is a way of a splitting computation tasks to a distributed set of files. It consists of a job tracker and multiple task tracker. So it's just a map reduced. Uh, it's the pop processing engine of the Hadoop ecosystem. Big data. Uh, what we covered can we thought into uh, whatever we have covered we can uh, we can thought of two distinct parts here using HDFS to distribute large data sets also using map reduce to distribute a computational task to a distributed data set now we are going these these things are coming from the Hadoop ecosystems means HDFS file system and MapReduce now the latest technology in this space in the big data space is also known as Spark Spark improves on the cons concepts of using uh, distribution distributed file system we are going to cover uh, Spark Spark versus, Ma versus MapReduce <coughs> Spark RDD is Spark data frame Spark is one of the latest technology being used to quickly and usually handle big data. It is an open source founded, uh, founded by a company called Apache Spark. It's a project on Apache. It was first released in February 2013 and has exploded in popularity due to its ease of use and speed. So Spark is very user friendly and also uh, uh, Spark is uh, mainly popular due to its, its speed. So generally, uh, people compare and they they say that Spark is actually hundred times way faster than MapReduce, Hadoop MapReduce. So often people start comparing Hadoop with Spark. We should not compare Hadoop with Spark because Hadoop is an ecosystem. We should compare uh, MapReduce with Spark because MapReduce is also a computation uh, engine in Hadoop and Spark is only the computation framework it's just the computation engine it doesn't involve it with uh, any storage or anything you can think of spark as a flexible alternative to map reduce spark can use data stored in a variety it doesn't mean that spark is going to use only hdfs it, it can use variety of data uh, it can utilize variety of data storage like Cassandra, Amazon S3, HDFs, anything it can pull data and get store data and get start processing Spark versus MapReduce now we are going to cover this, this is very important because uh, nowadays we are not using MapReduce why, why Map Spark is uh, handled way faster than here we are going to understand MapReduce requires files to be stored in SDFS but Spark does not so it doesn't need you always need SDFS to store but MapReduce have a dependency to store every file thing file on SD, uh, SDFS but Spark doesn't it Spark also can perform operations up to hundreds for how 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 this uh, speed we can achieve basically MapReduce writes most of the data to disk for each map and reduce operation means whatever task you are going to perform MapReduce is going to write and read the data from the disk and you know the disk reading and write operation is a is a much slower than directly reading and writing to RAM. Spark keeps most of the data in memory after each transformation. Spark utilizes RAM behind the scene. That is the main uh, funda, main main the building uh, blocks of Spark that it is 
actually using the RAM, utilizing the RAM rather than writing and reading from disk. And let's say uh, Spark has also, it's not like that it is going to run only on RAM. Let's say if you have more data, you require more uh, more RAM, then it can spill over to the disk of the memory also. It is not going to limit uh, its boundary to the RAM. If if uh, certain situations requires more memory, so it can spill over to the disk disk also. At the core, Spark is the idea of a RDD. The building block of a Spark is a res resilient distributed data set. So resilient distributed data set is a distributed collection of data fault tolerant parallel operation ability to use many data sources how is spark RDDs work basically you're going to write a driver program in either in python scala java or r your spark context is going to uh, submit your task to the cluster manager cluster manager is going to uh, divide how you're going to execute how you're going to utilize n number of nodes in the architecture these are the worker nodes they are the actual executor of the task they actually perform the task and report back to cluster manager and cluster manager give back the result to spark context and spark context will finally give the output to driver program you can see this the spark rdd's architecture so these are slave nodes these you can treat as a different different n, n nodes of a computer and this is the master master give tasks assign divide the task and divided the task and assigned to each a slave's node and they they use their own computation power and respond with the result <coughs> uh, spark rdds are actually immutable lazily evaluated and cacheable means sparks are immutable once you have created you can't change uh, next time if you are doing any change in the rdd it is going to create a new rdd it's lazily evaluated means unless until you are not very sure and you're not performing any action it is not going to execute let's say there is two concept here transformation and action you want to you want to perform some transformation in your data so it's, it is not going to uh, evaluate it at the time of in your code it's it's a lazily evaluated means unless until you're not calling a collection or you're not won't, uh, unless until you're not collecting the result it is not going to evaluate that's why it is called lazy evaluation two types of spark operations already discussed transformation transformations are basically a uh, uh, actions uh, recipe to follow means uh, you want to filter the data you want to remove unwanted data so basically you're giving a data you're filtering or giving a, a data as per your need transforming your data as per need but actions actually perform means uh, go and return something back go and finally give me the data <coughs> same thing <coughs> when discuss about uh, spark syntax uh, we uh, the very first uh, spark uses rdd but nowadays spark 2.2.0 and spark 3.0 they uses data frame and data set so spark is totally moving towards a data frame based syntax data frame syntax is basically it's like sql like syntax but keep in mind that the way files are being distributed can still be thought of as rdd but the the background is, is still the same how the architecture of the rdd the architecture of the R, um, uh, d uh, data frame is again the same spark data frames are also now the standard way of uh, using is if you if you try to use any sparks machine learning uh, algorithm they use a stark they support a spark data frame a spark data frame documentation is still pretty so uh, actually uh, let's look into the documentation uh, you see this is the spark uh, apache spark.apache.org this is the official website of a spark we are going to uh, walk through of the uh, website and uh, and understand how we are going to take much uh, uh, how we are going to take helpful uh, resources from the website so let's uh, switch back to our browser so this is my browser i already you already know i have already uh, opened this spark.apache.spark you can see so this is the official website this is very well written all the libraries every documentation everything is explanation is very well so this you can say this is the bible of a spark so see it's they are saying that speed run workloads 100 times faster ease of use Write applications quickly in Scala, uh, Java, Scala, Python, R, and SQL. 
Combined SQL streaming in complex analytics runs everywhere. Spark runs on Hadoop, Apache Mesos, Kubernetes, standalone or in the cloud. It can access diverse data sources. So moving ahead, uh, <coughs> let's move to documentation. So the latest uh, release of the Spark is Spark 3.0. You can uh, read a lot of things about the uh, latest uh, Spark overview. How you can download, how you can run uh, the Spark cell and all those things. So let's to go to the programming, pro programming ads. Let's say uh, SQL data frames and data sets we want to learn. So here you'll come and you can click getting started. So here let's say what is Spark session you want to know. Because Spark session is the entry point of every Spark program. So see these these the nicely tabs has is given over here. Means you want to you you want to basically Spark is a framework. It's not a programming language. So it needs a programming language or an API to interact with. That's why we have four four ways to interact with the Spark framework is Scala, Java, Python, R. So all the codes whatever you want, uh, what uh, everything you are seeing here is you can click the tab and you can the you can see the examples uh, overridden here in the different different languages R, Python, Java, Scala. Scala by default uh, you are going to get uh, the latest release on everything Scala is is, is Scala uh, uh, get first uh, of its version because Spark behind the scene written in Scala and Scala is written with the help of Java. So uh, the with, with the latest release you are going to get all the functionalities in the Scala but in Python it is it takes actually one cycle of release. Uh, uh, you have to wait for some features which already available in Scala but is not available in Python. So because you have to wait because uh, Scala is uh, Spark is written in Scala so you're going to get everything first in Scala. As you can see let's say you want to create a data frame how you're going to do that. So it's a very very well document document operations are here. Okay. Also you have API docs also. Let's say you want to learn Java Python uh, let's say you want to uh, Python for the Spark. So here you are going to get all the content. See Spark SQL types modules. What are all the things? Very nice. This is a complete Bible. If you want to know something like uh, let's say cluster ML or clustering module, PySpark ML package you want to know about, you can come here and read every function over here. Okay, so this is uh, what you can use this uh, programming guides for your uh, uh, for your research and all those things. Let's say you want to learn something, so it's better to don't follow blocks. Uh, follow this uh, Sp uh, official Apache Spark website. So that's all for this video because we have covered uh, the overview of uh, Spark here, big data, Hadoop ecosystem comparison between uh, Spark and MapReduce. Uh, we have covered uh, what is the uh, official documentation for the Apache Spark. And next video we are going to cover about how to set up Spark and Python. How 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 we are going to uh, write program in PySpark. So first we have to set up the env environment then we are going to actually write the code. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye.